Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today I'm going to be talking about bus starts and getting them in the right spot. This topic was emailed to me by one of my subscribers who was noticing that in some of the forums and some of the places that she um, you know, meets up with other sewers online, a very common theme was why my shirt doesn't fit and how can I get it to fit. And one of the biggest reasons for um, a shirt not fitting properly was a very simple thing. The bus start wasn't agreeing with the person's shape, meaning the bus start was not in the right place vertically. And this can be a little bit frustrating because if you spend time measuring, making fit adjustments, you know, and I think a lot of times people focus on making sure they have enough ease because you don't want buttons popping or feeling like you're squeezed in or on the reverse side, you want to make sure that if you're making a fitted shirt, it has a nice shape. So sometimes different steps in fitting can get lost in the process when your focus is somewhere else. So what I want to do today is just show you how to check to make sure that your pattern is agreeing with your shape in terms of where the bus start is. Before we get started, this moment of organization is brought to you by Jason at Action Blueprint. I get all of my patterns printed at Action Blueprint. They are amazing and I feel super blessed to live so close to a printer that can, you know, handle all of my business printing needs in such a wonderful way. And I was talking with him and he was telling me how um, he watched other videos with his daughter on a different crafting topic. And at the beginning of the video, they reviewed all the tools you would need. And of course, if you follow along with me, you know that I sometimes have to root around for my seam ripper or you know, find, take a second to find things. So I'm turning over a new leaf. I am going to share with you the tools you would need, you would need to do whatever I'm doing in my videos. So for this tutorial, you are going to need a clear grid 18 inch ruler or something similar. You're going to need either a pencil or colored markers so you can keep track of your adjustments. You're going to need paper scissors or a rotary cutter with a cutting mat. I'm going to be working on my wonderful cutting mat from the the Big Mat Rotary Cutting Surface Company and I'm going to use my rotary cutter. And then you need some scotch tape. A weighted dispenser is really nice because that way you can just get tape off the roll without using two hands. Um, so I have a weighted dispenser, my scotch tape, and then you're going to need a tape measure. Those are the tools you're going to need um, for today's tutorial. So thank you Jason for giving me a tip that I think will make um, future videos much more easy to follow. The other thing you are going to need is either your pattern with a bus start on it um, or if you have half size patterns that you can practice with that's fine too. Before we get going on the adjustment I want to show you here a picture of a fitted shirt where the bus start is too high and here's what you're looking for. So if you've already sewn your shirt and you've noticed now you have this problem, what happens when your bust start is too high is the fullness created by the bust start is above your fullness. And you can see here there are wrinkles and excess fabric hanging along the side seam um, higher than your bust. So that would be an indication that you need to lower your bust start. It's It could happen that you need to raise your bust start, but if you're working with, you know, most, especially the big box pattern companies and many indie companies, um, it's very rare that I've had to raise the bust start. But if you notice that the fullness is actually gathering under your bust along the side seam, that would be an indication that you need to hike up that bust start. So we're going to go with the example of lowering your bust start. So you can see in front of me here, I have a little half size pattern 
and I'm just going to draw a bus start. It's not fancy, I'm just drawing it in. Okay, so there's my bus start. Now, let's pretend for the sake of this tutorial that I've done every other adjustment I need. I've adjusted my shoulder, I checked to make sure the shoulder length was the right length, I checked to make sure I had enough ease, I checked the length of the garment, and I'm feeling pretty confident that this shirt is gonna fit me amazing. So the thing that I wanna check before I cut out my pieces is I wanna see if this bust start is going to agree with my bust. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you are going to take a tape measure, you are going to put it on your shoulder, and you are going to measure down to your apex. I'm just gonna stand up here so you can see. So from your shoulder down to your apex, Okay, so you want to just see what that measurement is. All right, so for me, that measurement is 11 inches. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that measurement and you're going to compare it to your pattern. So I'm going to take my ruler now and I am going to measure from the middle of my shoulder down to where the bust start is. Now here's the thing. The bust start should be a little bit lower than your actual apex. So the apex is where the fullest part of your bust is. The bust start needs to be just a tad lower than that. So for me, because I'm a G cup, I like my bust start to be up to an inch and a half lower than my apex. If you have a smaller A, B cup size, you can be a little bit closer to your apex, maybe, you know, three quarters of an inch. But in all instances, you do want it a little bit lower. I have my measurement 11 inches, so I'm just going to make a note of it right here. So me, 11 inches. So I'm going to plus, let's plus one inch. So that's going to be me equals 12 inches. That's my final answer. So what I need to do now is check to see if the tip of the dart is 12 inches from the shoulder. So starting at the middle of the shoulder, I'm just going to, you know, draw a line coming down. Okay, and just I like to have that there as a guide. So like let's pretend now that this is a half scale pattern and I can't measure the full 12 inches would take me right off the paper, but let's pretend that my 12 inch measurement was here, where this green dot is. So obviously you can see that the bust start is too high for my shape. So here's how you can very easily move your bust start. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a rectangle or a square around the bust start like this. Okay, so I drew a square around it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a note of where I want to move it. So I want to move it right here because that's my, that's the position where I need the bust start. Now I'm going to cut the bust start out along my rectangle that I drew. And all I have to do at this point is simply slide it down until the tip of the dart is in agreement with the position that I measured for the position of my apex. So let me just tape this down here. All right, so you can see that we've lowered the dart. I didn't really change anything else. I literally slid it down along this vertical line. And the size and shape of the rectangle you draw around the dart does not matter. Okay, so don't worry if you, you know, if your rectangle is a little bit closer to the dart legs, doesn't matter as long as you're sliding the whole thing down. And then you're using the, you know, whatever position that you measured that is your, uh, position of your apex on your body from your shoulder to your apex plus the little bit to drop it lower um, as long as the tip of the dart matches that there you go so 
you can see here now I have a little bit of a gap in my pattern. So I am going to take a piece of paper and I'm just going to fill that gap in. And I like to use these little post-it notes so you can see. Okay, so you can see now I've dropped my dart. It's in position and I'm happy snappy. One other thing that you can check is if you measure from, I'm going to stand up one more time. So if you measure from your side seam across to where your apex is, okay, so I'm just feeling here to, for my apex. The measurement from my side seam to my apex is eight inches. So you want to check and measure from your side seam to the tip of your dart to see how long that is. And also, you can measure from that center of the shoulder, you know, out the distance of your apex. So, you know, let's pretend. Now, obviously, this is a, um, a half scale. But basically, you can just sort of see on the pattern where your apex is going to lay underneath the fabric from your side seam. And then if the dart is really, really close to that position, you can shorten it or push back the tip of the dart. Um, or if the dart is too short, meaning there's a lot of inches between, you know, where the tip of the dart is and where your apex is, you can lengthen it. So typically, if you have a smaller cup size, like an A, B, C, the tip of the dart can be, you know, pretty close to your apex. You can get within an, an inch or so. Um, but if you have a D plus cup size like I do, then that the tip of that dart can be backed off a little bit. So most commonly my bust darts are around six inches long because I have an eight inch, you know, an eight inch um, distance between my side seam and my apex. And if my bust dart stops about two inches before my apex, that really puts that fullness right where I need it. So check that and see if you need to adjust it. Let's say we need to shorten it a little bit. Let's pretend the dart is too long. Um, let's say we want to shorten it a half an inch. So I'm just going to mark a half an inch away. And then I'm just going to redraw my dart legs. So we're just going to back it up a little bit. You know, and obviously if we needed to lengthen the dart, we would just do the opposite. We would measure past the original tip of the dart and then extend those dart legs. Okay, so that's another thing that you can check when you're working with a fitted shirt that has a bust dart. That's how you get the bust dart in the right position vertically, and also check to make sure the bust dart is not either too long or too short, um, putting that tip of the dart either too close to your apex or too far away from your apex. Um, those are the two things that you can do to really make sure that the fullness that the bust dart is giving you is going to create a cup shape in your fitted shirt where your bust is. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I will help you. I just want to remind everybody, tomorrow is the last day to enter to win the second giveaway in my 25,000 subscriber celebration. And this week's giveaway is from Cool Stitches. Debbie is giving us this subscription box to make this knit top. So it's a cardigan, it's got buttons down the front. And if you're unfamiliar with Cool Stitches subscription boxes, you get everything you need in the box to make the garment in this case. She also has um, subscription boxes for totes, bags, and organizers. There's a Jstern design series of um, subscription boxes, and there's some other things on there too. So I'm going to put a link to enter the giveaway below this um, video in the description. Plus there's a link to Debbie Gray's cool stitches so you can see all the different things that she has to offer for um, subscription boxes for sewers. It's very, very cool. 
I just want to take a minute and thank all of you for watching and following along with me because I really wouldn't be able to do this without you. So that's why we're having this extravaganza of giveaways. We will be taking entries for the subscription box until the end of Wednesday. So, you know, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then Thursday we'll announce the winner. And then if you're interested in finding out what the next giveaways are going to be, there's going to be two giveaways for next week, and I'm going to announce what they are on Friday during FabFit Friday. So make sure you join me 1 o'clock live here on my channel for FabFit Friday. I will be sewing something, and I will be revealing the, the next giveaways for my celebration. And this is super exciting because the giveaways I have for next week are amazing. And then the week after is our grand prize. So we're coming to the end of this wonderful celebration. Um, you know, really just to celebrate all of you for following along with me. So I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely rest of your day.